Hi, I am Chandrasekhar Gupta and we are discussing programming concepts. Today, let's try to discuss about hash tables. I know that it, it sounds like a nightmare for you, but believe me, it will be easy and we will try to understand its definition. If you see arrays and uh, binary search tree, all of these are having higher complexity when we try to search or insert or delete operations. But they thought to have an approach or they thought to design a data structure in which they can insert search or delete in the complexity of order of one. They made this possible with the help of designing direct address table initially. Suppose if you are dealing only with the values 1 to 100, they have declared an array 1 to 100 and whenever a number is encountered, they have stored that particular number. All the other numbers which are uninitialized, suppose for example, let's say they have given minus 1. If you want to search for a number 100, you will directly go to the 100th index and you can access whether it is present or whether it has occurred or not. In this way, you will try to get the complexity or reduce the complexity into order of constant or order of 1 when it comes to hash tables. That is a major advantage, but we have some disadvantages while dealing with hash tables as well. Hash table actually has a key and a particular value which is associated with the key. Key should be unique and we can have repeated values. What if a key is having multiple values? That will be a collision and that will be discussed in detail now. Let's try to understand hashing. We are having a universal set where we are having all the set of numbers that we are dealing with. Let's consider a situation where we are trying to deal with only numbers from 1 to 10. Then we have to decide a function such that by taking any one of this input and by performing it with the function, it has to map to a respective position. Let's take the hashing function as modulus. If I am having the numbers from 1 to 10 and I am having the size of storage to be 5. Now consider this array and I am having 5 elements. If I encounter a number 5, I will perform modulo with the length. Length is 5. So 5 modulo 5 is 0. So 5 enters in this position. 5 will be stored here. If I get the number 2, 2 mod 5 will be 2. So 2 will be stored here. If I get 7, 7 modulo 5 will be 2. So 7 even has to enter here. But it is already occupied by 2 and in this case we call it as collision. We have defined hashing or hash function so that we will be able to search, delete, insert an element in order of one time. But because of the collisions, we are making it more worse. So to avoid collision, we will try to follow some of the steps. We can use a better hash function or we can perform chaining or we can use open addressing space which is probing. We are having linear quad and double hashing inside this probing. Let's try to understand each and every one of them. Better hash function. Previously, we have seen modulus as the hash function. Instead of that, if we are trying to have a number, let's say if we are having a number x, then x square mod length or x square plus x power 5 mod length. In the similar way, you can define hash function so that number of collisions are reduced. Or you can perform chaining. If this is the space where we have in collision between 2 and 5, we can actually store it in terms of linkages. 2 will be stored, it will be storing an address to 5 and so on. But this in turn actually reduces our probability to perform the search in time complexity of order of 1. Order of 1 will be failed when we try to develop it with chaining. In the case of probing, we can shift the position based upon the linear probing, quad probing or double hashing. If we encounter a collision, then we can actually perform another hash function and we can actually allocate another position to that particular number or we can actually move the position to the next element in the case of linear probing. Previously, I am having 2 over here and I need to store 7 also in the same position. I will check for this position. If this position is not empty, then I will move it to the next position. This is called linear probing. In the case of double hashing, Whenever I encounter a collision, I will try to use another hash function which may give me other position which is empty. Here I have shown the example of chaining and linear probing. The operation used here was modulus. So the length is 5, 5 mod 5 is 0. So 5 has to enter in the first position. Similarly for 15, it has to enter in the same position as well. We have tried to keep track of it with the help of a linked list. We are trying literally to chain the elements, that is why it is called as chaining. In the case of linear probing, I will include 5 at the first position and 
whenever i had a collision with 15 i'll try to store in the next location in the case of 25 these two positions are occupied so i'll shift one more position further if you have uh, let's say 2 2 needs to enter here but as it is occupied 2 will move to the next this is the way in which hashing is done literally we are having a key and we are having a value associated with it 0 1 2 3 4 all of these are keys 5 15 25 all of these are values that are associated with these keys respectively i think that gave a brief overview of what hash table is and how they are used i want to give you a practical scenario where hash tables can be deployed suppose if you are trying to maintain a hotel and you want to keep track how many times a particular uh, person is visiting your hotel so if he is visiting multiple number of times you thought to give him a reward and you thought to maintain a data structure for this you can make use of hash table you can make each and every person that visits to your hotel as a particular key and the value can be the number of times that he try to visit your hotel when he is having a bill you can add a value to the particular key or his particular name by this way you can keep track of the number of times a particular person has visited your hotel and you can reward him or do as you want it can also be used to count the number of characters in a particular sentence for example if someone gives you a sentence you can keep track of the number of times a particular word has occurred or a particular letter has occurred with the help of a hash table here key will be the particular letter or word and the value will be the number of times that it has occurred while you are traversing through the sentence that is a lot about hash tables 